Hi, people keep on asking me, can you do a tutorial on Sketchbook? I'm like, of course, I'm going to help you out. Relax. So what do you need to do to use Sketchbook? First of all, you need Sketchbook. Here's Sketchbook. Secondly, you need a pen. Here's pen. Start trying. There you go. It's that easy. I just taught you. You are welcome. Anytime. Anytime, my friend. All right. That was a joke, of course, because I want to talk about Sketchbook Pro. I mean, I'll do the Sketchbook Pro. And I want to lay out a little bit. I, I want to go in deep with all the little tools that you have here. So this is definitely not an advanced uh, tutorial. So if you already know Sketchbook Pro, I don't think this is going to be super helpful for you. But you can still stick around and just see uh, what I know. Maybe you know more and maybe you can add some more stuff in the comment section. Okay, so this is a screen that always appears lately. I'm not happy, but it's it's good that it went free. It just advertises that it went free. You can go to a quick tour and it gives you some nice uh, tutorials how you can use it. Basically, that's what I'm going to do very quickly now as well. Uh, first thing first, you go to edit, go to preferences, go to general and make sure that the default save format is always PSD. It's not TIFF because you're probably going to cross use it with Photoshop a little bit. And it's just nice to have it in PSD. PSD is always a better format in my opinion. And the other thing is you go to canvas up here and the default canvas size, you set it to whatever you want. I, I in this case for me, it's set to an A3, which is European standard uh, and 300 DPI's. So it's, it's ready for printing and it will get activated every time uh, I use or I make a new page so I go to file uh, new and you will see right now it's at 100% and I make a new one it will be at 30% because then I have to zoom in um, so we have several toolbars here we have the brush tools here on the left we have the general tools in the upper part we have two pucks here uh, and then we have something down in the corner which is absolutely useless in my opinion well you can either use this or a toolbar i like this long toolbar all right uh let me go through the toolbar first first one we have the zoom in you can zoom in it's a zoom in puck it's divided into three different areas it has the zoom in the middle but it also has a rotate in the middle uh, let me zoom out a bit so you see this so now i rotate the canvas now i zoom the canvas and if i click here i can pan the canvas and you can turn this off with the x the shortcut key for this one is space. So you just press space, disappears, you release space, it disappears. Zoom in, rotate and pan. Uh, the next one is selection tool. So this, this can be a rectangle, it can be an oval and you can have the typical ones that you also have in Photoshop. Uh, not the biggest fan of this. <laughs> what is this? What is this called? Uh, polyline, but I like the lasso tool and I like the rectangular selection tool. Let's deselect it with this one. You can, of course, you can the, just normal selection and then you can add to it. You can also add to it with the lasso tool and then also you can subtract from it. So it's, it's, it works pretty much as in Photoshop. No reason to go any deeper into that. Uh, you have crop, works as everywhere. You just crop. I'm not gonna go through with it. Uh, I take the brush. I'll go over the brushes in a second and I draw something that is very weird i don't know what this is <laughs> but i go to uh, this one uh, you can select either with marquee and then this little puck appears which is very similar to the previous one where you can move it around right i'll take it back to its place you can rotate it uh, you can scale it uniformly or you can scale it vertically or horizontally oh no that was the wrong one horizontally there we go uh, a selection can be like with the marquee tool or the rectangle tool, but you can also just take with the lasso and move it, scale it, whatnot. The shortcut for this one is V, also good to know, because then you just do a selection, just with the normal selection tool, press V, and then you can start doing, and as soon as you release V, it's applied. All right, uh, next one would be this transform tool which takes everything that's on that layer. So it transforms the layer. So keep that in mind. I will talk about layers in a second and then you will understand it more. If I, for example, delete everything that we can see here, 
and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I don't like drawing when I'm that zoomed out. And I'm going to draw sort of a wooden uh, fence. Let's say a couple of planks put together and just give it just a little bit of wooden effect, right? There we go, just a little bit here as well and then a little bit more there. Now, uh, let me, uh, there's an eraser down here. Yeah, I'm gonna go into the brushes in a second, don't worry. I select this tool now and now I can distort it. So I can apply uh, perspective to it. There you go. And then just apply it and then just draw in the parts to make it a little bit more 3D. Useful tool, but as I said, it only takes layers, which is a little bit annoying sometimes. As you can see, I just press the V and then it, the, the whole layer gets moved. So basically this uh, transform tool. If you have no selection, it just moves everything on that layer. Uh, next one is the bucket, bucket tool, which you know, and it also has a different sorts of uh, gra gradient tools. Mm, not that reason to go into, you have text. Not so good in a sketchbook. I would just skip text, maybe edit in Photoshop. But what sketchbook is really good in is the linear, uh, the ruler. And then you can make really nice, sharp lines with it. You can adjust it. It basically it has two handles, so you can adjust it however you want, and you just move it to the next point, and move it to the next point, and you can do all sorts of cool things with it. Ruler is awesome. Ellipse tool, same idea, also super awesome. It has five handles, one in the middle, you move it around. Uh, this one, you basically squeeze it and enlarge it. Uh, you have the scale tool, you have the rotation tool, and then you turn it off. If you double press any of them, it goes back to its standard form. So if it's squeezed and you double press the squeeze one, it unsqueezes, same with the, the scale one. And the good thing about this is, so if this would be a plank on a wooden cart, let's say, and I want to add wheels here, it's super easy because I always say you have to follow the axis of the wheels so that there's always an axis that the wheels are placed on. And let's, let's say if that axis would be here, I just take this tool, I adjust it, uh, this is the axis, then I try to squeeze it, See the axis is right there, let's make it bigger. And there you go. You can move it a little bit to add some thickness. You can make it a little bit darker as well. Then you make it a bit smaller. You can also squeeze it together. That will be the inside of the wheel. And turn it off. And it's a perfect, quickly done wheel. Really, really useful. Uh, another thing is this uh, designer shape tool. What well, I don't know what it's called. French curve, there we go. <laughs> it's, for example, when you when you draw cars and you have these really nice curves for cars that I am not good at drawing because I'm not an automotive designer. But this is really useful if you want to make these curves nicer. Uh, same tool, uh, well not same tool, but it has size, it has rotation, uh, move it in the middle, turn it off. Uh, then you can uh, flip it here and you can switch in between different, I think there's four or five different uh, French curves. You just take one that you find quite nice and appealing, and then you just apply it. And then you try to continue from there on, like if you want a little bit of dip and curve there, you can apply that a little bit there, and then go to a different one and then just close off, let me see if I rotate it a little bit, there we go. Close it off from here. And then you have a really, that's how you can have really nice lines. Uh, from here on we have the perspective tools. I talked in perspective in previous videos, so there's no reason in going in one perspective is, but we have the one point perspective where everything converges into that one point. Really, really helpful because you can also build everything quite fast, but it is one point. Uh, what I like much more though, let me clear the page, select all and just did it, is a two-point perspective. Watch out not to make it too, uh, well, technically, no, don't watch out. It's basically, you, you have your horizon line, you have your two uh, horizon points, what is it? convergence points? Damn, I just forgot what they're called. 
but you guys know I already, I already said this in a video. It's, it's a perfect help. It, it can help you quickly build 3D elements. You can also make them float in the air. Yeah, definitely, definitely a great tool. I use it from time to time when I want to make sure something is uh, accurate. Three point perspective. Let me erase everything again. Three point perspective. Let me, oh, just, I'm just gonna zoom in. This happens when you look up at high buildings. There you go. There's nothing much to say here. It's, it's, it's a useful tool if you need to use it. Uh, let me erase this. And then also you have the, well, spherical perspective, is it called? Fisheye mode, yeah. It gives you a nice fisheye lens. So uh, let me turn this off a little bit. If I would draw, if I wanted to draw some, you know, those Scott Robertson sort of trucks that are nicely bent. Let me do a quick sketch here. Then I turn this one on to see where it is. Oh, no rotation, thank you. Hmm. I feel like I should make it a little bit smaller to get these curves done nicer. Uh, there we go. So here we go. Let's make it a bit smaller. Zoom in. So this is going to be very forced, I feel like. But it, it might be look also a little bit like uh, Genji, I think he's called. He's not going to look necessarily like Scott Robertson. But you guys, I hope you see what I mean. You can, you can really do these nice, crazy fish islands uh, drawings and then just switch and fill in these and with uh, with uh, yeah uh, not, nothing with <laughs> uh, okay so this is this is a really nice and cool tool that I like to use from time to time then you have the uh, what is this a symmetry uh, which is basically good if you want to draw anything that's symmetrical I did quite a couple of uh, signs lately so for that you needed like two posts on which it's standing and then you just design the area where there's going to be some writing and you can make it some vikingy and since it's christmas we can add some sort of minor christmas decoration there uh, what's nice that you can also use the, uh, the um, ellipse and the ruler tools here so if i want to draw an elliptical area here it will add it to the other side as well that's really cool really useful uh, you can also do it of course horizontally and you can double them so like horizontally would be like this right but if i double them it does everything at the same time so you can go in crazy calligraphies here uh oh, kaleidoscope sorry not calligraphy let me erase all of this and because there's also this craziness this is great if you want to do for example i'm going to rotate this a little bit people who do car design and you want to do um, not a fender what is it what does the car wheel have well we will remember soon I hope there we go let me turn this off and now let's say something like this all right so you can do really interesting fender no it's not fender why is my brain giving up? But well, the things that are inside the, the, the wheels, you guys know what I mean. All right, go away. Uh, this is a cool tool if you want to have a more control over your line. So you see there's a little bit of lag between what I draw and when it happens. So you can control your line quite a bit more. Uh, another really cool tool is this, um, what is it called? Predictive stroke. So if I want to draw an ellipse, I can draw it by hand like this. Or if I apply this one, it will make it it will close it and it will snap it if you see perfect ellipses it makes it nice love this tool uh, these are not important just lines and thing is that if you want to sketch you're not going to use this anyway so i wouldn't worry about that uh, but the next are the important tools again which is layers we have our layers here uh, you press and pull then you have add layer i'm going to add a new layer and then this layer you can delete you can also hide it you can lock it you can merge it down or you can merge down all and you can of course rename it i'm gonna delete it in this case uh, if i make you can also just swipe up then you make several of them you can add a folder 
and then you just with this from, from this little up and down thingy you can move things into the folder and then the folder you can close you can hide it it's basically works the same as in as in uh, photoshop if you are familiar with photoshop uh, you can import images it's you can also just copy paste it in it's not necessarily there and this little bar that you also have on each uh, layer if i draw something here there we go this little bar is the opacity bar and you can also lock the layer so you only draw on on, on um, the pixels that are already present these were layers let me oh no uh the brush tool here just so you can see this one here appear and disappear when i push this since i'm there i can also talk about the brushes a little bit uh, you have th these are the different brushes this is just a pencil brush then we have a soft brush or airbrush uh, we have all sorts of marker tools here this is this is a standard brush set right then we have a ballpoint uh, this is a hard brush i would say some inking brushes like this is actually not a bad inking brush uh, then we have some smudgy smudgy tools you can have some nice effects but you never use that in a, uh, i would say as an industrial designer and sharpening and then we have the two erasers uh, a harder eraser and a much softer eraser now uh, what's important to know here as a uh, shortcut is the uh, letter s because s lets you switch between the last two uh, brushes so if i have pencil and eraser it means if i press s it jumps back to pencil i just draw, draw something if i want to erase something s it jumps to eraser so i don't always have to turn my um, uh, into us or pen or whatever you're using around to use the other edge of it so s will switch between the last two brushes i don't really use the standard brushes because eh, i don't find them that interesting instead i use uh hudson rio brushes i'm just going to show you the two because you can get all of these brushes from Sketch sketchbook pro so just drive in Hudson, uh, drive right in Hudson Rio uh, brush set, and that is I press here. This brings up the brush library, and there is my Hudson Rio brush set. If you click it, you see you can move it around just like with the previous one. Like you can arrange it as you want it, and with this one you press it, and you can uh, create new brushes based on what there is already. But I would like to pin this to my palette here and I'll make it big again. So this is my my standard brushes that I can always use. Uh, why do I like this? The pencil that Hudson Rio has is one of the best ones. So I use this to for all my final lines because I just love this how it how it works. It's a little bit better than the standard one. Well, the standard standard one is already really good. His airbrushes are fantastic. I just lo love his airbrushes. He has hard brushes like a really hard one, medium hard one, and like a super soft one. And that's also how his erasers are set up, like a hard eraser. Uh, medium hard eraser and then a soft eraser but he also like these were all, all based on the hard ones so he have also a really nice eraser that just takes the edge of just a little bit so you can really blend away those those harsher edges and the other brush set that i use quite often is that of his name is k mr k melon and the k melon brush set and that you can find here as well uh, and mr uh, kevin mellon he is a story artist for archer so storyboard artist for archer and he has just great great art in general and i really much fell in love with his uh, thicker pencil it has a nice rough edge to it it really feels like you're drawing with some sort of and I actually, I use this to do also some storyboarding myself. So it can give you those really biting. Well, not biting because it's not, not sharp. It's like really soft, but the more you go over, it's like gravelly, you know? I, I just, I really enjoy this pencil quite a lot. And he has some good other things. So he has some other pencils. I don't use them that much, but all of them are, are this nice and rough. So perfect for sketching. His uh, inking stuff is great. Like, I love this brush. This was a little bit uh, rougher. Uh, he has a couple of great splatter tools. Either way, just, just I really can recommend this. these two brush sets. They're amazing. Um, and there's also some standard. I, I use the synthetic paint ones for actual painting when I want to paint some sort of landscapes. 
there's no reason for I, I, I can I'll, I'll show maybe run through in the end when I'm done talking uh, how I use those uh, brushes so this is the brush set uh, aside from the library there's another button here which where you can uh, adjust your brushes so you have a lot of advanced settings from opacity to flow to everything just select the brush and then here you can really adjust as much as you want with textures with shapes and it's, it's a lot of options you can play around what am i missing these two pucks how i like to set up i have the black one here and the white one here the black one is basically color you tap in it you can choose whatever color you want in the ring you choose the the hue and inside you can choose the saturation and brightness but you can do that also by not tapping it so if i have the red here if i just pull down it goes to uh, zero luminescence which is dark and if i pull up it goes to 100 luminescence which is white but then if i tap into the middle and if i now pull right it's full saturation and if i pull left it's technically if i go all the way to the left it's zero saturation so you can really adjust it from there very quickly as you want it and on the other side let me go back to black basically you have the size which Oh, sorry, that was opacity. So the size is on the horizontal line. You can make it quite a bit bigger, as you see. You can go also down again. So white, nice and thin. I like to keep it at seven. At least this brush works for me at seven really nicely. Ah, let me go up to eight. All right. And if you go up and down, that's the opacity. So you can make it much less opaque and you can work over and over again or you can put it up to 100 so these were the pucks they are quite useful so what i forgot to say you have a color wheel here where you can pick your colors basically the same one that you have here as well you can pick your colors here and you also have a couple of swatches right yes swatches uh, that you can paint with uh, you have the color picker which is basically alt works the same as in photoshop the um, Copic library, which is basically a whole bunch of swatches. It's, it's Copic's colors. So you have the designer one and illustrator ones. I work more in the designer ones and mostly with the grays, which is the cool grays, warm grays, and then you have the toner grays and the neutral grays. So if I have, let's say, a dark box, let me zoom in for this one. Bam. There we go. A dark box. Then, and the sun shines from here. I'm gonna take my C2 and my with the brushes. What I I don't know if it, I think it's it's standard. It should be standard with um, Sketchbook. I take the thick uh, part of the Copic marker and I just start painting this part in, right? And then I go to uh, I see that's not dark enough. Let's take C4. I just do it with the C4 and then which means that if the light comes from here, I can switch to a C2. For this side and I'm going to do a C0 is that yeah there we go well I'll do this that's too warm for me let's do C1 on this side and then the C2 I will go over with a C3 on it and I feel I think I will darken the C4 to a C5 yeah I like that quite a bit more so sometimes when I, I really want to do a quick sketch I use these uh, so I, I only use these two brushes from Copic right and then you can do this and i wanted to show something else towards the end oh yeah exactly so how i set up my um, brushes here right so what i do i have this hudson rear because i use these quite a lot sometimes i really like using this uh, basic pencil so what i do i click on it right as i'm here go to this one and i do uh, there's a duplicate copy brush right there we go now i have it twice and now I pull it into the Hudson Rio brush as well, right there. It appears here as well. And what I like to use here as well, I duplicate, oh, sorry. So I duplicate uh, this brush and I duplicate this brush as well. And I pull them both into there because I really enjoy using them. So like this, you can set up your own mix and match sort of brush set. And I close this and then I can easily switch and also like because i love the k melon brush so much i'm just gonna eh, go here oh sorry this one i keep forgetting and then uh, copy brush and hold it hard and let's bring it over here as well 
So now I can really just mix and match all the brushes that I really like. But yeah, this is all I wanted to show you uh, this week. Next week in part two, I am actually sh uh, going to show you how I use these tools. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like. If you have any questions or if you think that I left something very important out, please leave a, a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram where I post quite regularly. But most importantly, wish you a great day and great week and see you folks next time. Bye-bye.